Yeah, so I want to share with you how to make my beet cakes. And of course, we're going to use tons of your good uh, mm -hmm. hemp flour and um, the oils and uh, the olive oil that we made. So um, I'm excited to show you this. Uh, first of all, we're going to um, I'm going to have you grate the carrots and the beets for this. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do a fine grate on three carrots. And then we're going to do a fine grate also on one beet. And so if you can grate that for me while I'm getting this uh, going here. Okay, and then I'm going to get the uh, mushrooms, onions, and celery and garlic going here in a pan. We're going to just saute that off a little bit using the uh, hemp olive oil that we made. Got that hot. I'm going to throw a little bit of garlic in there. Get that going. So once this garlic kind of starts going a little bit, we're going to add onions. A cup of onions. One cup of celery. And about a cup and a half of uh, fresh chopped mushrooms. going to take a second to cook down, but we're going to also add our special Chef Frank seasoning. This is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and a little bit of paprika. Um, I just kind of make it myself because I use it for everything. And then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Franny's, the Abigail. Abigail. Abigail flour to this. Um, it's going to, you know, you get the earthiness with the mushrooms and we're going to you know, get a little bit of that earthiness from the, the fresh flour. And fresh earth and from the garden. And a fresh thyme from the garden. So we're just trying to, because, you know, the beets and the carrots are so powerful, you want those earthy flavors from, from the, the cannabis and the mushrooms. Um, the flavors from the celery and the onions, that's savory. So now that you've got that all grated, we've grated the carrots, the beets. Um, there's so much juice inside those beets that they're just, there's going to be too much juice in the patties themselves. And so if you can just actually ball that whole thing up maybe into one big softball and hold it over this and just kind of squeeze as much juice as you can get out of that into this bowl. Yeah, see, we want to get rid of that because then it's just not going to allow us to bind that. We're, you know, we can use this for other sauces and... Uh, maybe soups and stuff later, but uh, we don't we don't want all that juice right now. Ta -da. <laughs> so foo -foo flour. This is foo foo flour, and uh, I didn't know about it either until um, I have three adopted kids from the Congo, and this is a staple in their diet. Um, it's basically a plantain flour that they make dumplings out of, and they'll have mm. dumpling soups and things like that. Um, and so I needed a binder, but I didn't want to use any kind of glutinous stuff, and so this is a great alternative to gluten. It's basically just pureed plantains. Um, and we're going to use that to help bind our beet cakes together. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our mushroom, onion, celery, garlic mixture done here. I am just going to grab a towel. And then we're going to drop that into our food processor. So, yep, so that's one cup of barley. Um, and this I'm using again to kind of create some body to this. Um, um, and you don't want to like puree this thing. Um, so we're just doing a little pulse, 
pulse, pulse, kind of like we're doing a cauliflower rice. We just want to get like a meaty consistency because it's almost like a meat substitute. And so when I was coming up with this recipe and, and how I, you know, what I wanted to taste and the texture that I wanted, um, I needed that, you know, something there because the, the beets kind of, once they get hot and, and the carrots get hot, they just kind of get mushy. mushy. And so yeah. this gives us, us like a nice meatier consistency. You Is can that see good there. Or? Yeah, that's perfect, Franny. Mm -hmm. Why don't you add that there? Uh, I've got a little spatula that we can scrape the sides. Perfect. Mm. Yeah, so the, the mushrooms, the onions really go good with the, the beets. Now, if somebody were not using foo foo flour, would they um, just you be can, able to you use can flour? You can use any kind of flour. Um, you know, I just wanted one that didn't have gluten in it, mm -hmm. and so I, went, I opted for this. I had a, a cabinet full of foo foo flour, um, mm -hmm. but we're going to add a little bit of this in there. Um, it's going to be about maybe a quarter of a cup of the foo foo flour. And you're looking for like this consistency, right? Yep. Is it yep. better to grab a glove and do it, work it with your hand? You um, we're, no, for now we just want to kind of stir it all together. Um, we're going to also add some fresh parsley mm. to give it some nice fresh flavors. It's so pretty. And then to continue layering the CBD, we're going to use some yeah. of the CBD oil in there. Four droppers of this because we're yeah. going to be using the CBD other ways too. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, just fold that. Right. So great job mixing that up. Um, what I like to do though with this is let it, you know, put it in the fridge and let it sit overnight. Um, it just awesome. kind of helps bind it all together. It, I, I feel like it releases some of the moisture, it dries out a little bit, and it just helps bind it. And so I've got a batch um, that's ready to go. Um, this is cooled overnight. And what I like to do is grab a little cookie sheet. Um, and I've got some parchment paper here. And that way we can just form up some of the beet cakes. Um, this is totally versatile though too. You can you could make these into beet balls, so like a mock uh, meatball or uh, great for hors d'oeuvres or, you know, with pasta or something like that. But uh, what I prefer to do just because it cooks better and more even is to do little beet cakes. So it's almost like a salmon cake or a potato cake, but it's a beet cake. And they um, are dynamite. Yeah, so if you can help me just kind of scoop up, you'll want to scoop up maybe about a you know, golf ball size into your hand. Um, and just kind of form it into a ball as though we were going to do a beet cake, I mean beet ball, but then we're going to just kind of mush it down and create the, the cake. And then lay it down just like that. Perfect. That might a little bit bigger, right? Well, no. A little I mean, bit. The size doesn't really matter in this case. Well, I like them. That's what they all say. But I do like them a little bit when they're flat, too. I love them when they're in the balls, but mm -hmm. I also love them when they're flat because it gives it a little bit more of the surface area for the crispiness. Right. And I love when it gets well, that little crispy. Oh, and the hemp oil. Mmm. This is a great vegetarian I am so... Yes. So while you're doing that, I'm just going to get some oil hot in the pan. Uh, for this, we're also going to be searing these in the pan to get that nice good crust on them. And again, we're going to use our handy dandy hemp oil that we infused earlier. Um, so you're going to be using this In the all handy the time. dandy iron skillet, because <laughs> Franny loves to cook in iron skillets. Oh yeah. Once you've prepared the patties, uh, for the cakes. Uh, you, you'll have about 12 from that batch. Um, we had just a little bit more, but um, you're looking for about 12 of these cakes. And then we're gonna take this over to our hot oil. I've got some oil in the pan here. And we're just gonna drop them in 
probably about six at a time, however many we can get in that pan. So what type of oil did you use there, Frank? That's the, our hemp oil that we just infused. Yeah, that's actually mm -hmm. right back here that we're infusing another batch. So you're just going to do these in like two batches. You want to get a good char crust on, on the bottom. Not, you know, obviously not burn them, but uh, so they have a good texture and good crust on that side. So we're going to flip this. Uh, you want to really get it good on one side. You don't want to just like keep flipping these. Um, so you really only want to flip it once if you can. That little char there that you see, that's okay. Beets have just a little bit more sugar in them, and so they're gonna do that. Um, that's the part. Looking good. Okay, Franny, so we got the beet cakes done. Um, We've got a nice little plate here. Um, Franny, yeah, just put a little field green on there, just a simple plate. We're then, um, you can grab a couple of those, the beet cakes that are yeah. done there. Mm -hmm. And just lay those on top, real nice. And then let's crumble just a little bit of goat cheese on there because everybody loves goat cheese with beets. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. such a good combination. Why yeah. is that? Is it something to do with the acidity or? It's just the flavors of that goat cheese mm -hmm. with that earthiness of the... And so this is a avocado cumin CBD sauce that I made. So again, another layer. We've oh, we had yeah. it in the oil to cook them. We have I it in the, inside the beets and now we've got it on top. And then you can also take it, you know, bam it one mm -hmm. other notch and give it a little drizzle over the top to get all those flavors. Oh, tell them what you mm -hmm. like to do with that. I love to use this product as, as a garnish um, because you can see like when you put it on a, a white plate like this, it really gives like a nice green hue and it's just a beautiful extra touch as well as having medicinal and herbal, you know, attributes. Deliciousness, yep. deliciousness. And then oh let's uh, just throw a little bit of parsley over the top and voila, my beet cakes. They're awesome. <laughs>